Hello everyone, Trigger's the name, and this is my video game news cap for the week. Really quick one for you guys, I just want to get right into it. Um, I'm actually kind of disappointed. Last of Us is getting a remake, not a port over, not a remaster, like a PS5 remaster, a PS5 remake. For me, Last of Us was perfectly fine. There was nothing really that wrong with it. Like, it seemed to me that, like, it was a fine game, you know? Like, I love all the Joel sections. It was actually really cool. The story was really good. The gameplay was really fun. I liked the horror aspects to it, the story, the atmosphere. Then when I played as Ellie, it was actually a lot of fun, too, because I had a different side of things, you know? She actually had a knife the whole time. I didn't have to worry about it breaking. And then she also had the bow, which I love bows in any video game, so I'm actually super down for it. I had a really cool story. I had a really cool ending. It was, it was a masterpiece. A lot of people really loved Last of Us. That's what made this giant community of people just loving Last of us so why would they make a remaster of something that's already great i don't know it seems kind of weird to me like i think to me it's kind of depressing because last of us 2 wasn't that great in my eyes a lot of people did like it apparently um but me personally i couldn't get into it it's not my jam it was definitely way more shock and awe that i thought it was going to be and the story was all over the place and i don't know it just wasn't my jam i didn't really care too much about it i didn't really play it that much um but if they would put all those elements that made the game kind of terrible and put it onto last of us I would actually be very disappointed. Like, because, like, at least everyone could say that, like, hey, at least we have Last of Us. You know, we can still do that. And I know that there's going to be, like, a Netflix or something series of Last of Us, which actually sounds pretty cool. Now, if they make the gameplay and the cool graphics that they did with Last of Us Part 2 and put on Last of Us Part 1, I actually think that'd be great. I would actually be totally down to actually play that. Because the gameplay and the graphics and the, all the sound design and everything like that was really top-notch. In the second one, I just really hope they don't change in the stories of the characters in the first one. Like, maybe they'll make a DLC of like, hey, this is what happened with Abby and Abby's story and why she was all mad about the death of her father or something like that. I know, some kind of connection, but what do you guys think? Are you guys looking forward to this Last of Us remake? Or do you think that Last of Us don't need to be remade? It's fine the way it is, you do not need to mess with it. Don't touch it. <laughs> Stop it. Stop messing with great work. Just keep the way it is. Not mess with it. People want to play it? Play on PS4 or play on PS5 and just have it upscaled or something. I don't know. What do you guys think? In other news, uh, Twitch. Uh, apparently, they have a new kind of thing that they are doing where not only if you're doing something really bad on stream, you get banned. But now if you're off stream and you're in your other social media accounts, you can get banned. Like they can actually go after you and like research your background, and all your different like social medias. And if you're like doing really bad messed up things, they will actually ban your Twitch account because they don't want any of that kind of stuff to leak into your content. Even if you're like super nice, like VTuber and all happy and anything like that. But if on the actual side you're actually like a terrorist, then they really want to get rid of you and they don't want anything a part of you in Twitch. Which I don't know, I need to read up on a lot of more of like the Twitch bans and like things going on with them because I know one day I'm probably going to have to be really cautious about it because I am slowly gaining up in like followership in Twitch. Actually, I'm at 95 followers on Twitch and I'm getting closer and closer and becoming affiliated. So I probably should check out more of the rules, but I feel like this could be bad, but also I feel like if you haven't done anything wrong, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. Like for me, I don't do anything wrong. Like literally all I do is anime, video games, work, sleep. That's it. That's literally all I do. You know, like, like I literally wake up, watch some YouTube, go to work, come back, stream for you guys sometimes, watch some anime, and pass out. That's literally my entire schedule. So I don't have anything to worry about, luckily. And I feel like most people shouldn't have to worry about this. I don't think it's really a bad thing, personally. But I don't know. I, maybe some people will have like their secrets dug up and will be like randomly missed on Twitch or something. I don't know. 
But like that's only Twitch. There's so much more like streaming sites like people can go to nowadays. I know YouTube is getting really big. That's actually also where I like to stream too. So like I'm pretty sure like if they really have a hard time banning all these people, they just jump on to another streaming site. You know, like Twitch is not becoming that monopoly kind of streaming services like it used to be. Like YouTube's actually getting pretty big with there, and Facebook's still a thing. So I wonder. If they, if they keep doing this kind of things and make it harder and harder for people to stream on their platforms, will they actually start losing people to actually get onto there? I wonder. What do you guys think? Are you guys thinking that this is actually a good move on Twitch? Banning all these really bad content creators on the other side of like Twitch to keep, make sure that they don't do anything on Twitch? Or do you think this is more of a reason that Twitch really needs to stop putting all these ban hammers on all these kind of people? Because they're going to actually start realizing that some people don't really want to go on Twitch anymore. I don't know, what do you guys think? This might be a little thing for you guys to get into, not too crazy, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but apparently Epic Store, like Epic, actually going to be losing about 330 million competing against Steam. Because remember how like Steam has been like the monopoly of like PC market where if you want to buy something you go on Steam and you pretty much buy a thing. Well on the back end of things, Steam takes a lot of chunk from revenue from other people when they buy things from Steam. And probably because you know Steam is Steam, you know, they have a lot of money and they can take more money because this is kind of like a monopoly sense for them. So they don't have to worry about those kind of stuff. So it's actually kind of interesting that Epic is trying to compete against them because like they want to be the other kind of like streaming service or like other kind of marketplace where other people could buy PC games on there. And tell you the truth, Epic actually has some really cool features on there. Like the actual store, like interaction and integration is actually pretty terrible. Like they just, I think, made it so you can actually add things to a cart before you just buy them. I feel like should be a thing in the beginning, but like they also have like free games they throw in there. They have they give like the people who are selling their games on there like a whole bunch of revenue. Like hey, you can get almost full profit if you sell your games on our system. You know they're trying to do whatever it can to compete against Steam, and they're doing a pretty good job. Unfortunately, because they're doing so much of those kind of stuff, like giving like the developers all the money, and making their games, and giving out free games to all these people, return policies, all kinds of that, they are losing a lot of money from doing that. Now, $330 million sounds like a lot of money, but remember, this is epic we're talking about. <laughs> epic, you know, the people who are in charge of like Fortnite and like PUBG Mobile and like all this other kind of crazy stuff and Call of Duty Mobile and all this kind of stuff that is like into that kind of market of mobile gaming. I'm pretty sure they don't have to worry about that. Like, I think I heard something about like PUBG Mobile makes about like three million a day. So like that's 230 million is not that bad if it takes a day to make off like 10% of that. I know it seems like it's something that is not too crazy for them, but oh, it seems pretty insane how much they're losing out just to compete against Steam. Like, I don't know how that is going to affect with the overall sales of everything, and maybe that's going to turn them into more of a Steam focus kind of style. But so far, Steam's still not budging. And I think that's the reason why they're not budging, is because they make so much money that Epic can do whatever they want. Steam's still going to keep doing what they're doing, because people still know what Steam is. But I don't know. Do you guys actually buy things from Epic? I don't. Like, the only thing I've ever bought from Epic was like. Watch Dogs, and that's because I didn't really buy it. I got a free code, but I can only download it through Epic or something like that. I can't remember how to how how I had to do it. But like, I didn't really do much about Epic. And I do a lot of purchases on Steam. Like, I have a lot of games on Steam. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think Steam is a little bit in the right or anything like that? And Epic needs to probably die down a little bit, or do you think? Epic should take more of a Steam property and maybe charge more money for their games. What do you guys think? Last thing I want to talk about for you guys really is just that Days Gone 2 is supposedly not going to be a thing. Hasn't been officially announced that it's not going to be a thing, but yeah. Now, this might not seem that very important to you guys, like who cares, Days Gone not getting a sequel. Well, 
who cares? Well, it goes into kind of the notion that Sony has been focusing on what makes a lot of money and doesn't want to make risks off of companies that don't make that much money. Like apparently Days Gone did very well, but it just didn't bring in the funds as like Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War, and Ghost of Tsushima did. Like those games did that really well. And even though Days Gone did super well as well, it just didn't make as much profit, I would imagine, the other ones. So Sony's kind of like, I don't really know if I want to work on Days Gone 2, because what happened with Days Gone 1 release, I don't know. But Ghost of Tsushima though, ooh, let's, let's give you guys a movie, let's give you guys a game, let's give you guys all this kind of stuff, you know, let's give you sequels out of sequels and anything like that. Which is like, don't get me wrong, I didn't care too much about Days Gone. To, like I wasn't really that into it the first game I didn't really get into it like it sounds like a pretty cool game open world like zombie kind of style a game like Legion um, but I don't know to me I just didn't really feel like a playing another zombie game and like I'm just not in the mood for it because Tsushima I'll play that any day I play that just casually you know like whenever I just have a stressful day I just pretty much just jump into it Ghost of Tsushima and just play it love it uh, so I would love to see like Ghost of Tsushima 2 so I don't know how they would do that but I still think it would be really cool to see like Ghost of Tsushima 2. I want more attention on that. But it just shows that Sony is also kind of looking less into like the small market and only into the really big market. I don't know, what do you guys think? I, you guys excited for Days Gone 2? Were you excited? Did you guys even play Days Gone? Or did you guys even know that was one in the thought works? And if that's the case, Sony, what do you think? Do you think that they should have focused more on like indie kind of games? Because like look at Ghost of Tsushima, it was with Sucker Punch which is not that big and it shot out like huge after the Ghost of Tsushima came out. So like there is potential of working with companies that are not that big yet. You don't need to work on companies that are already established and big. You know, give some chances for the other ones. But I don't know, what do you think? Do you think Sony should give them a chance or do you think they should focus on what makes games really really big just focus on like horizon god of war and stuff what do you guys think all right that's gonna wrap it up for me today L nice little show one for you guys i wanted to get some information out for you but not too much um there might be some other things i could talk about and anything like that but if i missed it you guys let me know in the comments below i'll definitely talk about it next time and if there's something i talked about that was wrong in any way let me know. I would definitely be down to check it out as well. It'd be really cool to have a nice conversation with you guys either here or on my Discord server. I think it will be freaking awesome. But until then, I hope you guys all have yourself a freaking awesome day. And yeah, bye.